Hello. Welcome to Lower Master's Lair. And with it, another monthly market. I'm the Laughing Salesman, here today to bring of us a variety of artifacts with which to make your games just a little more magical. I happen to be on a bit of a rush job this week. You see, I was told that the centerpiece of this week's offerings was actually shown on previews to be in the next Impossible Lands book, and that I need to show my stuff this week ahead of schedule before the secrets were out to everyone. So I guess I'm the one here to celebrate the book's release instead of the Lore Master this time. I guess that means we better get started. First, let's get two items out of the way. I have been around the block a few times before and brought mention of some items related to next. So we will be not going to focus on either of them here today. The first is the lens of Gulandori, which we brought up in our looks through the Marauding Expanse a couple months back. And then we have the Scroll of Kashkaton, which I believe was part of the first month of market. Good times, good times. See information about these items there. I don't do a piece for my sales. That out of the way, let's start the show by rolling out the big number item of the night. The Cube of Force. A little classic item which dates back to the days of D&D. This item takes the form of a cube, made out of well, any substance really, wood, bone, metal, whatever it took as a fancy. When the face of the cube is oppressed, it activates, creating force walls 10 by 10 feet all around in the shape of a cube. The wall stops what is inside from getting out and what is out from getting in. It seems like a simple concept, though there is a little more to it than that. First, each face has a different setting. We have a cube which keeps gases, wind, etc. from passing through. We have one that keeps non-living matter from passing through. Then, we have the opposite, which keeps all living matter from penetrating the walls. Setting 4 shuts down magic. And setting 5, well that's full power, an absolute defense. And as for the final face, it's the off button. The second thing you have to remember is that you need to worry about the charges. At max, the item holds 36 charges, which we set at the beginning of each day. However, for every minute it is on, you lose charges. For example, you, uh, example for setting one, you lose one charge per minute. Then it's two for setting two. Three of them for setting three. If you're on setting four, that's going to cost you four. And if you go big, use the absolute defense. That's a total of six. That means if you go full throttle, you only have a max of six, six minutes per day. So it takes some strategy to use. And of course, that also doesn't bring in the issue that the walls can be damaged. For every 10 damage from an attack that is over 30, that's its basic defense, that uses up a charge. Therefore, as an example, if you a good 73 points of damage is done, that is going to eliminate 4 charges in one attack. In addition, there are spells which specifically can eliminate charges themselves. Wall of Fire, that drains two charges. Attempt to use Pass Wall on it, that's going to be three. Phase Door, likewise, is also three. Then we have big name spells like Disintegrate, where one strike would cost six. Likewise, a blast for a horde of blasting, that's also going to be 6. There, and then, using the legendary 
prismatic way, ray. Well, that's one for every color of the rainbow. The third and final thing to remember is that the base cube needs to be held to be used. There are some variants which you can set down to allow yourself to escape, but the garden variety version requires you to be at the center of the six walls, cube in hand. Which means the greatest weakness of the cube is doors smaller than 10 feet wide. But where, or where, do cubes of force come from? Well, there was an ancient Aslanti artifact which was found once and had costly changes symbols that had strange effects when activated. However, all modern cubes of force originate from the man himself, Nex. You see, he had eight apprentices one for each school of magic. So what he did is he created nine cubes, one for each apprentice to use to counter a magic that they were weak against, and one which, of course, he kept for himself. Eventually, the formula to make them became widely known, which allowed for the creation of the modern and slightly weaker versions we have today. So from that, we have two questions raised here. What are the powers of the Nexian Cubes of Force? And where are they now? After all, after all, over centuries, the cubes have been scattered far beyond their homelands of Nex. First, let's go with the three that are still in the hands of the Ark Lords, which are Evocation, Necromancy, and Transmutation. Evocation when there's a possessor completely immune to evocation magic. Necromancy kills all minus undead within the area of 30 feet by reducing them to dust. Or, sentient undead, it harms them as if to spell dead, undead to dead. And transmutation dispels all transmutation effects in 20 feet. Now that's a pretty good set to keep in one's pocket. The Abjuration Cube currently is in the hands of the leader of the Lion's Guard, and it dispels all abjuration magic in 30 feet, which is perfect for late night assassinations. The Conjuration Cube is kept within the Mender Mountains by Devils, the magic to dispel summoned creatures within 20 feet, keeping them from ever getting too close to the cube. But the Devil's working hard to Ensure no one else finds it and uses it in order to use it against them. Then the enchantment cube is kept on the shelves by the Pathfinders, which is not really the best use for full immunity to enchantments, but eh, I guess it's not the kind of thing you take out on a regular field mission, I guess. As for the remaining two, the locations are unknown. The divination cube has the ability to hide anything from divination as long as it's within five feet of it, including itself. So, unable to locate that is easy to explain. The illusion cube, which utilizes all illusions in 40 feet, that's a little hard to explain. There's plenty of theories like it's destroyed or happens to be within five feet of the other cube of the cube of divination, but impossible to prove till it's actually tracked down. And as for the legendary cube of Nex itself, we do not know what it does. It is rumored that it allows one to take control of all magic aimed at, it, at the owner, but the fact that the cube was lost with Nex means that we may never know. So that was today's big ticket item. But that is not the only mythic artifact Nex left behind when he split. Another big one is the Scepter of the Ark Lords. This staff is a walking wish, able to drain their magic in the surrounding area in order to use a powerful spell. Sure, there's a chance that it might backfire, cause spell blight, create an area of dead magic, Overuse can piss off all nature spirits in the area. You name it. But it is a 7 out of 10 chance to use 
a minor wish. And another an two tenths chance for a wish in all of its glory. The staff was left to the Arclords when they were leaderless, and during their long exile to the island of Jamore, before, of course, it was taken aback. They used it as a symbol to power, but during the reconquest of the island, uh, people who knew its hiding location were killed by the genie fuel assault. So now the disruptive staff is hidden, most likely, deep in the southern jungles of the island. Are no magic guardians and traps likely still in place? And one final treasure for the night, not for Nex. I said that wrong. Not from Nex, but for Nex, is the Eternal Egg. This item was created by Archlord Afrin Estefan, who was obsessed with Nex. Using a codal egg, the mask should create this device. When activated, it would allow one to go from the egg location to the Arclord's private sanctum. However, it also continuously sent out a signal trying to get next to pick up from wherever he currently is. If he answers, it would allow Fangirl, or whoever had the egg at the time, to go to Nexus side for 24 hours. Maybe even allow, be allowed to bring him back from wherever he's trapped. But I see nothing like that in the description, so. But in the end, it's just a way for a groupie on st to take the stage to talk to their favorite psycho, so. And, of course, she was killed before she could fulfill her goal, so. It leaves the whereabouts of the egg currently unknown. As well as if she will ever, if she ever got or apply for her, or she, or she was left unread, I guess. <laughs> Who knows? Eggs. <laughs> and that's all for me today. Glad I was able to get in the preview for these items right before they hit 2E markets. But that's how it is sometimes, isn't it? Merchants just have to go along with the flow of the market. But next week, the Lord Master will be back with the book Originally, with the video, originally planned to have been celebration, the celebration video for the Impossible Lands book release. But until next time, my cart's empty, so I'm going to head out. Take care, everyone.